clickbait. There was a new policy on Twitch that was announced today that will legitimately destroy the platform with the majority of streamers choosing to go elsewhere if it goes into effect. Now, this was announced like three or four hours ago, but I decided to wait a little bit to see what Twitch would respond with because the backlash has been considerable. Everyone is rightfully furious about this, and I just kind of wanted to let it all simmer, let Twitch kind of marinate in this witch's cauldron here and see how they would respond to all of it. So I went and played basketball, which is why I'm very sweaty right now, and I've just got home, and it turns out they did respond. I expected them to respond with something like- Title is a clickbait? Okay, bro. I mean, look. He, first of all, Charlie played basketball before this, okay? That's how you know severity of the situation. He came in sweaty, looking hot and bothered, okay? Um, but what I will say is, yes, if Twitch implements what they're talking about, if Twitch implements what they're fucking talking about, then it is, you know, it's, it's massively, uh, it's a massive issue. It's a massive problem. I don't know if it would cause the end of Twitch, but it would make the platform worse overall. Okay, certainly. We'll get to it. I'm sure Charlie will cover it. I need to grab a like, jacket. I'm our cold. Our sincerest apologies. Earlier this afternoon, we were coming down with a severe case of big fucking idiot disease. Turns out one of our employees replaced our water with plutonium and stupid juice. So we had radioactive brain rot when we came up with this idea we're scrapping it we're sorry that's what i expected but they went in a different direction they went with a very pathetic attempt to save face and backpedal so we're just going to go over this whole situation from top to bottom here it was revealed today that twitch has put sponsored content and branded content in their crosshairs to try and fucking slap so formats permitted with the new guidelines on branded content on twitch are logos on stream, so branded overlays are limited to 3% of screen size at most. So any branded overlays can only be 3% of screen size. That means, like, if you have a G Fuel sponsorship or something, you can only have, like, G Fuel in the 3% of your screen area. You can no longer have burned-in video ads, meaning you can't play, like, your own ads during it or ads of another brand that's working with you. You also can't have display ads, so, like, banner ads, which is a big one because a lot of sponsored game streams require banner ads, which completely removes that, which is a huge hit to most streamers. We'll, we'll get into the specifics in a moment. And then you can't have audio ads played during streams. Now, they clarify what is allowed, which is branded panels on the channel page or showcasing products in the stream background or links to other sites that promote things, discussing endorsing or unboxing products, and playing sponsored games. The last one's a little silly, considering that when you play sponsored games, part of that package almost always includes at least one of the things that is now forbidden uh, with the new policy changes they're toying around with. Now, all of these are huge changes. A lot of streamers have talked about this. I've talked about this. The vast majority of revenue... A I recall before the parasocial era, Twitch viewers were calling for a limit on how much screen space was occupied by advertisements. I've literally never heard that before. Um, I don't understand why someone would uh, have an issue with that. The 3% advertisement is specifically about like, you know, um, it, it's, it's usually like an ad placement, right? That's how big it normally is. But it's dumb because like, no one really abides by that because you just resize it on your own. Like this is, I don't know how many, what percentage the Kaya cam is occupying right now. I don't know what percentage the Kaya cam is occupying at this moment. I don't know what percentage the Kaya cam is occupying at this moment. You know, that, that kind of thing is like really fucking silly. Now, there used to be an anti-shill mentality. Okay, that makes sense. Like being anti-advertisement makes sense. Um, I'm sure that there was like a point where people were like, oh, I don't like that. Uh, I know that that doesn't matter. You want to know how I know that that doesn't matter? Not a single one of those like old school Twitch watchers will ever praise someone like myself for not really having any sponsorships whatsoever that I deliberately keep that way. So uh, ultimately, I'm pretty sure that that is uh, irrelevant uh, in this conversation. Uh, that Those days are, are, are long gone, and even then it doesn't really matter. I think most people are frustrated by the ads that come at the top of the hour, the three-minute ad break, for example, um, uh, which comes at the top of every hour. That, that's what people are upset about, like unskippable ads, which I think is an issue. 
Now, of course, if you want to skip those ads on this broadcast, you can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub. Uh, I have fallen off. I am hemorrhaging subscribers, apparently, according to some of my haters on Twitter who have been paying closer attention to my subscriptions than I have. But um, here's the three-minute ad break. Now, regardless, I think I'll be all right. Um, so, yeah. Please subscribe so I do not fall off. Okay. So, where was I? Where was I? Um, as far as Twitch's sponsorship changes goes, it's already in the fucking terms of service, but them putting this out there makes it seem like they're going to actually follow through on it. It's in the YouTube terms of service, as Mogul Mail also brought up uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, Say Rar, thank you for the five gifted. Flucky, thank you for the ten gifted. Now, bring back sub count. Uh, my sub count is public. You can see it. You just need to hit exclamation mark subs and it will tell you. There you go. Or exclamation mark sub count and it will automatically tell you how many subs I have. So, Twitch made these like ridiculous, Twitch made this ridiculous announcement in the middle of the night as they usually do, okay? Um, and, and obviously there was a lot of backlash around it, but uh, I don't really care from the perspective of like uh, what uh, watchers used to think about ad space or whatever. I look at this as someone who is only talking about it from the perspective of like a content creator generating value for the platform and what the platform's decisions mean for said content creators and why they are taking this action against the content creators. Twitch is trying to siphon more money from their content creators, okay? That's it. That's the only reason. It is absolutely unbearable to have this conversation over and over again with people who are hitting it from any other angle. This is what companies do, okay? Twitch is owned by Amazon. Amazon wants Twitch to be profitable. And instead of finding unique ways of expanding uh, into a broader audience base with marketing initiatives and new products that you are releasing, uh, instead of finding new mechanisms for monetization, Twitch has decided to do what companies have done time, expanding uh, into a broader audience base with marketing initiatives and new products that you are releasing, uh, instead of finding new mechanisms for monetization, Twitch has decided to do what companies have done time and time again. Milk the workers. Now, of course, it sounds funny when you say workers because, like, work omegalol, job omegalol, you're a Twitch streamer. I mean labor and work strictly from who is generating the value uh, since it doesn't mean that like Twitch streamers are working in the fucking coal mines. Obviously not. Uh, we have pretty cushy gigs overall. There's obviously some negative sides to this job that many of us hide. But uh, other than that, it's pretty good. You know, I've worked a normal job and I've done this. And let me tell you something. Uh, you know, it's it's much nicer. I have a lot more autonomy. Okay. So. As I was stating, Twitch uh, popping off like this is a tale as old as time itself. You have a larger company that owns you, that decides to squeeze you uh, into becoming more profitable. And then that company tells you to make decisions. You panic and you make decisions that actually end up harming the content creators because you're squeezing them for a little bit more value to, to get out of them, which ultimately makes... Uh, I mean, it, it, it's ultimately what Amazon does all the time. Twitch currently does not hold a full monopoly over the live streaming space, but is pretty, is pretty powerful in the space. Um, uh, its competitors have fallen off. Uh, they're either like completely irrelevant uh, projects like DLive or they are, you know, they've, they've gone the way of default like Mixer, which was owned by Microsoft. Or it's YouTube, and YouTube doesn't care too much about the live streaming space right now. So Twitch doesn't really have any significant serious competition in the live streaming space, which is why they can get away with this, because what are you going to do? 
go stream on Rumble? Are you going to go stream on Kick? You know, that's that's usually what Twitch's mentality is in this space. Are you going to go to Facebook? You're going to go to Facebook Gaming. So, a lot of these platforms have benefits and 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 negatives. You know, they have positives and negatives. Uh, but ultimately, there's a reason why I like to always say YouTubers like Moist Critical, for example, still stream on Twitch for a reason. Moist Critical has, what, 12 million subscribers, 13 million subscribers on YouTube, yet here he is, not live streaming on YouTube, he's live streaming on Twitch. That is a very clear and very obvious benefit, that, that implies that there's a very obvious benefit to streaming on Twitch, okay? Whether it could be diversifying your revenue streams, or whether it's because it's the best live streaming platform out there right now. Twitch knows that, and that is precisely why they make actions like this, because they think you can't really go anywhere. You know, good luck. This is where the audience is. This is where the revenue is. And, you know, you got nothing else going on. You can't really go anywhere else. Okay? So, he says that he's uh, later trying to leave Twitch later in his video. That's fine. But I'm talking about right now as it stands. The reason why I'm talking about right now as it stands is because I need you to understand why Twitch is able to make these decisions. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, people might leave because of said decisions now, but the reason why Twitch thinks they can make these decisions is because of the things that I just mentioned. Do you understand? Do you get it? Okay. That's why Twitch thinks it has a damn near monopoly on the live streaming space. Chica, 4273, thank you for the 5 tier one give A streamer stuff. generates is through sponsorships, whether it's sponsored game deals for like X amount of hours streaming a game or just ancillary partnerships with other brands that you will promote during your stream. That's where the majority of streamers' revenue comes from. Like almost all of the top 500 streamers, that is their biggest driver of revenue. Subs and donations are a small part compared to sponsorships. So Twitch targeting that is like the only decision they could make that legitimately would drive all of their top 500 streamers elsewhere if they can no longer pursue partnerships comfortably on the platform. This is a platform destroying moment. This is up there with Tumblr banning porn or that day that OnlyFans decided they were going to ban porn. It is a completely, it's Armageddon for the platform. This would sink Twitch without exaggeration. Uh, let's talk about some more specific examples. Tournaments, video game tournaments, or even just any general events could no longer function on Twitch because for those tournaments to exist, they have sponsors. And as part of those sponsorship packages, yep. the events like a Smash event or a Valorant event are obligated to play those sponsored ads. Dur I'll pause this for a second and just say this. It is so insane that I didn't even for a second take this as seriously as every other content creator did. Well, one, I didn't because like, I, you know, I don't ever take any sponsorships uh, to begin with. And two, I didn't take it uh, seriously because like, it's, it's such a insane change that there is no way in hell that they would go through with this because they would <laughs> eradicate the one area that they actually dominate everywhere else on, okay, across the board. And that is live events. People still come to Twitch for video game releases because Twitch has drops. People still come to uh, uh, Twitch for live events because this is the live event platform, okay? Sponsored streamed live events is what people watch here. Esports is what people watch here. That's fucking nuts. That is so profoundly stupid. Like, they, there's just no way. They would know, there's no way that they would do that because it would literally be like taking a gun out and shooting yourself in the foot first and then in the head for no fucking reason, okay? You're not using the gun to shoot someone else. You're not using the gun to rob a bank. You're just killing yourself for no reason out of nowhere. Makes no sense during the event which has now entered santa claus's naughty list here on twitch it's illegal you're going Do people really drink g fuel or play world of tanks lamont crimey river top 500 streamers he he well i'm in the top 500 i don't have a single fucking sponsorship and let me tell you 
a lot of people that are in the, especially bottom of the top 500, or a lot of normal, smaller Twitch streamers, absolutely rely on the additional income to be able to consistently stream. And also, it shouldn't even be a limitation. Because if you want to make, uh, if, if you are a professional streamer, if you're a streamer, okay, and that's the way you want to generate revenue, then it's ridiculous that a platform would stop you from doing that, okay? Like, why is the platform trying to take away your decision power in how you want to generate revenue? Well, I know why. It's because Twitch wants to make more money. They want to be the ones who are the, the uh, people responsible for selling you ads so that they can take a cut off of those ads. If they were offering this as a purely... Uh, voluntary way to do such a thing, then that's great. Maybe a lot of small streamers would maybe take advantage of the Twitch advertisement sales team. They would they they wouldn't have to do any of the big business deals. They wouldn't have to do any of the red line. They didn't they they don't have managers. Let's say possibly, and now they can use Twitch's legal team and and all of its other offerings to be able to conduct these deals. They don't have an in house sales team, so now Twitch's in house sales team helps them out. If this was purely voluntary then that's great but it's not purely voluntary as a matter of fact this would be a gigantic limitation okay let's continue the fucking slammer you're going to jail if you play a sponsored ad during your stream from these policy changes so let's take for example valorant valorant has an ebay deal so during intermission in between games and valorant broadcasts they play ebay ads not anymore not anymore, Buster. You can't do that shit yet, you outlaw. Listen here, Bubba. No more of that shit. Now, there's something very interesting to note here is that YouTube actually has a similar policy that a lot of people are bringing up to compare the two right now. But Twitch's enforcement and the way that they spoke about it seems very different than the enforcement of YouTube. And from everything I've read, YouTube doesn't really enforce this policy even at all to begin yeah. with. It's just kind of there as a blanket in case things get exploited or misused. No, it's a blanket... In case YouTube, just like Twitch is doing right now, wants to ext extract more revenue out of their content creators. That's why it's there. Make no mistake. It's, maybe it has a secondary component to like ending uh, some level of exploitation or whatever. Or not, you know, some like weird uh, third-party ad service uh, that's like taking advantage of the situation or something. I don't know, taking advantage of like content creators or whatever. But the real reason why is because they want to extract more revenue, not from the fucking consumers who are on the purchase side of the product, but from the contracted employees that aren't like full-time employees. They're content creators. They get a 1099 from ABC if they're at uh, YouTube or a 1099 from Amazon if they're at Twitch. Those are the people that try, they are trying to squeeze in order to try and make the company more profitable. But either way, there is, there is something comparable on YouTube, but not nearly as egregious or as frightening as what Twitch is proposing. Now, when this policy change first got announced, we immediately tried reaching out to as many people as possible for some clarity because the way that it reads seems like it's going to have a massively detrimental impact on our esports org, Moist Esports, thanks to the way we do our watch parties. and from Our ABC alphabet, sorry, Google. All the information we've gathered, it seems like we're in some fucking hot water there, which is not good. Opera GX sponsors our esports team. And as part of that sponsorship deal, during our watch parties when we're cheering on our teams, we play our own custom Opera GX ads that we made ourselves with green screen, like where I'm a pirate or a fisherman, those kind of really goofy over-the-top ads, we play those. But now that whole concept is more forbidden than human transmutation in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. We can't do that anymore, which is a huge hit to our esports org, since Opera GX pays us under the expectation that we're also going to be doing those ads during our watch parties, which we can't do anymore. We also have a banner ad for Opera GX during the watch parties, which we can't use anymore. So the main two things Opera GX is sponsoring our esports org for has been banished to the fucking Shadow Realm. So what are they paying us for if we're, if we're to continue doing watch parties on Twitch? And it's entirely out of our control. It's not like we're choosing not to fulfill our obligations with Opera GX. Twitch just wouldn't allow us to or else 
my channel would get banned on Twitch for doing so, I imagine. Now, Opera GX has been an extraordinary partner. I don't think they'd actually drop us for it, but they would have every reason to because they wouldn't be able to get what they were paying for with our esports org and our watch parties anymore because Twitch isn't allowing it in its current state, at least not as it stands from their first pass of this policy. It's just so fucked up. Now, it's not just, you know, our esports org or, you know, top streamers or anything like that. It's any streamer that would pursue sponsorships, which is a lot of them. You know, big and small streamers, all of them alike, do rely on sponsorships. And this hits everybody equally. It fucks everyone in the face all the same. It is an extremely greedy and corrupt, degenerate decision from Twitch. It is fucking disgusting. It's definitely worth mentioning that I have seen some arguments being made where Twitch might you're being biased. People have been leaving this platform because of their bullshit terms and conditions, and they ban people for literally as small as showing guns. Wait, I'm being biased. I haven't even said anything. What, where is the bot? I don't even... What? I didn't even say... Now, you, are you just imagining what I'm saying now? What's happening? White guy one. Are you are you here from the future? Did you decide what I was going to say on the subject? That's interesting. Okay. I follow YouTube's example here and won't enforce it strictly. Yeah, like by the way, I don't know if you know this white guy one, but I've shot guns on this broadcast. <laughs> On the platform, and certainly on this broadcast. Hold on. I just reserve this policy for bad actors only. And I guess that is entirely possible, but there's just no way of knowing. We just have to wait and see how it all plays out. But there is very clear ways this could be implemented that hurts every single person who uses the platform. And personally, I feel the reason why they're even making this policy update in the first place isn't necessarily to follow suit with YouTube or something as like a you know, a fallback protocol in case there's bad actors misusing branded content somewhere. I feel the reason they're doing it is to try and push all their streamers to do everything through Twitch. You know, do all of their sponsorships through their sponsorship programs, that way they can get a cut of everything. I just, that's how I interpret all this, that's how I feel the motivation behind it was is misguided, it's mismanaged, it's completely lost, it's geriatric, it's run by octogenarians, it's out of touch, and it is desperate. It is desperately trying to get its grubby little fingers, just plant these little piggies in each pie that happens on their platform. And that comes right out of the streamer's income. We've already seen them do that with the sub-revenue where they're dropping everyone to 50-50 sub-revenue forever, non-negotiable, and now they're doing it for sponsorships because on Twitch, all streamers, a lot of them, are doing sponsorships, and when they do, Twitch sees nothing from it. They don't get any portion of sponsorships done by streamers on their platform, and that makes them furious. They got steam coming out of their ears. So this is their attempt to try and force streamers to comply with Twitch's ad incentive program or their, their branded content program, such as, like, the Twitch Bounty Board. The Twitch Bounty Board works kind of like a sponsorship where companies have approached Twitch to do, like, sponsored game deals... And streamers can go into their bounty board, click and see what's there, and then choose to take a deal where they're getting paid X amount of dollars for X amount of hours. And if they do that, Twitch gets a large portion of that income. To me, yep. it just seems like the direction Twitch is going is do everything through us or else. It's only been Yep. That's exact. Charlie is right on this. You have been biased. You have defended Twitch in the past. Also, just because you haven't been banned doesn't mean they don't ban others. White guy, once again... Uh, I have been banned more times than whatever content creator you are talking about. I am out of the top content creators on the platform. Probably the content creator that has been banned the most. Uh, I've been banned more times than even XQC. If I'm not mistaken, that's what we looked at, right? Uh, we looked at this, uh, l like a couple months ago. Um, you know, I, I get banned a lot. So you're wrong. The reason why I still defend the terms of service in spite of its vagueness and uh, it's certainly something that needs a lot of, of, of transparency, the reason why I defend terms of service across the board or like a rigorous application of the terms of service is because I believe that that's good to create an environment that is more positive 
I don't think that you should allow hate speech on your platforms. I think Twitch does a good job of at least combating that better than other places. Not doing the best job, but I don't think he's right that Twitch wants to take over sponsor sales. I think the reason why Twitch is doing this, and you can get on the call if you want, Ludwig, um, the reason why Twitch is doing this, I believe, is because they want to take over sponsorship sales and uh, and have an additional uh, revenue stream. That's my speculation. That's my suspicion. Um, but yeah, get in the fucking call right now. Get in the call right now, you right-wing content creator, you, you YouTube lover. Program, it seems like this policy change was supposed to scare streamers away from partnering with brands outside of Twitch's ecosystem here because Twitch doesn't make any money if you get a brand deal outside of this program. Whereas if you use Twitch here for their sponsored streams, Twitch makes money from it. Twitch is really trying to monopolize streamers' income, and this is something Mr. Beast just mentioned on Twitter as well. Twitch just wants to make sure that if any money is generated on their platform, they get a piece of that pie. They want that cake, they're gluttonous, and they're willing to sink as low as humanly possible to get it. It's sickening. This doesn't just affect individual streamers. Like I mentioned, it affects anyone that wants to do events on their platform as well. So let's do another example. Smash tournaments. Smash tournaments rely entirely on sponsorship revenue, like a, a, a Papa John's ad or, or something like that. All of it that all of their money comes from sponsorships which means banner ads uh large screen built-in ads during broadcasts and even just full commercials during their broadcasts during intermissions all of those things are no longer allowed if this policy goes through as written that ruins every single gaming event that happens on twitch right now and generally just every single event ever so like a music festival. Music festival is another great example. Music festivals rely heavily on sponsors too. If you watch a music festival that sometimes get broadcast on Twitch, you'll notice they have their own built-in ads as well that they'll play sometimes, depending on which one you're watching. That's no longer allowed either. So should this policy be pushed through <clears throat> the gates of fucking Mordor here and make it to the platform, every single event organizer is going to leave Twitch because they legitimately will not be able to run on Twitch anymore if they can't play ads from their sponsors. And sponsors aren't going to give money to people or, or uh, events if they can't have their brand be showcased, like with a banner ad or a, a normal commercial. If they can't get anything out of it, why the fuck would any of these brands sponsor anything on the platform? It's not going to yeah. happen. So all of the event organizers are probably going to go to places like Kick or YouTube. And I imagine most of the streamers will be going to other platforms as well, at least part-time. They won't fully invest in Twitch anymore because it's not safe or reliable to do so. Again, Twitch themselves have said, like, most streamers are getting most of their money through sponsorships. And now Twitch is hitting sponsorships. Like, it, they're reducing their ability to make money through sponsorships. Like, directly impacting them, even after recognizing how important that is to the ecosystem. So most streamers, there will be a mass ex exodus, I imagine. A lot of no one's advertising on Kick. I mean, that's different though. There's two different kinds of advertising. Um, one that like the streamer himself uh, creates through a third party sponsorship uh, portal, like a thir third party ad network, versus uh, you know their own fucking manager or whatever. Uh, versus the advertisements that run alongside the content, like the three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Uh, when I press the three-minute ad break service uh, on the top of the hour, uh, that inventory is one that is fulfilled by Twitch's own internal sales team, okay? Now, if you don't want to see those three minutes of ads at the top of the hour, which come at the top of the hour, remember, uh, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub like uh, Has Hasanabi's Nipple or Blasted Save, which gifted five gifted subs in the community, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the, th the three-minute ad break now. So when I run that ad, Twitch's internal sales team sold that. They sold it against, a, you know, inventory, against specific demographics, against specific, like, you know, uh, taste clusters or whatever the fuck, right? They sold that. Um, does Kick have that? Uh, internal advertisement team or like are they working with a third party uh, uh, you, you know uh, advertisement sales team that they've outsourced to I don't know will they be able to uh, sell ads against uh, kick inventory I also don't know um, is it likely probably not because in order to have higher CPMs okay cost per mill the the higher uh, 
you know, like in order to have a more valuable inventory, you need to make brands believe that your platform is actually decent. It's sustainable. It's got, you know, it's not going to run across like someone fucking talking Nazi shit. You know what I mean? It's not going to run across like uh, uh, actual pornographic content. It's not going to run across someone actually gambling. You know, a lot of these things. Did you guys just, why is Ludwig saying cost per mil after I said it already? Okay. I was a fucking ad sales guy. I was a biz dev guy. I know what I'm talking about. CPM means cost per 1,000, but it's mil. Like the, the word is cost per mil. I got it right. Shut the fuck up. Mil in that sense just means 1,000 impressions, okay? Anyway, shut up, nerds. I'm, I'm nerdier than you, okay? So. As I was saying. Kick with the way that it's seen to brands right now is not exactly a, a, a wonderful space for Burger King to be like, oh yeah, I would love to run ads on content of a dude getting his dick sucked by like an OnlyFans girl. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that that's, especially with like every little thing that comes out of Kick, every piece of news that comes about Kick, anytime Kick gets a write up, which it doesn't really get write ups in like mainstream media anyway. It's often just getting write ups in like Dick Cerdo and whatever. Anytime they hit the SEO, okay? Anytime they hit fucking Google, a Dick Cerdo article comes up about like a dude that's like sexually assaulting someone or some shit like that. No, no blue chip advertiser is going to want to fucking, you know, buy ads on that inventory. Okay? That's not going to happen. So for that reason, I don't think that kick has like uh, any kind of interest in uh, building out a genuinely profitable uh, and, and sustainable service. But like uh, Ludwig and I were just talking uh, about, they kind of have like uh, a money faucet um, that is backed by uh, crypto gambling, which has very little overhead and a tremendous amount of upside, a lot of profits. It's just pure profit. Uh, as long as, like, crypto doesn't completely tank, as long as, uh, you know, there is no uh, international regulation, as long as there's no American regulation on uh, crypto and crypto-sponsored things, uh, Stake will keep uh, Kick alive because Kick is a, uh, a source of marketing and, uh, and a way to convert viewers into, uh, you know, lifelong gamblers, whales. Okay. So yeah. Let's continue. A streamers have already said that they're going to do that on Twitter in response to this. So streamers are going to go to other platforms so that way they can continue to have these sponsorship opportunities. Like Twitch is really on the, on the deathbed here. This policy change is the end of the platform if it goes through. Now, I've said this, I've been very open about it. When my Twitch contract ends, and I am doing my best to try and end it early, when it ends, I will be going to other platforms to stream just to test them all out. I'll still be streaming on Twitch occasionally, but like I, we can't even do our watch parties there anymore, which is a big thing that I love to do. So I would like to try streaming on YouTube, for example, which is why I turned on memberships on YouTube here, just in case. So it's one of those things where this is something that will destroy the platform. And Twitch must have recognized that because they did put out a follow-up statement about an hour ago here. And I think it's trash. I think it is a terrible response. Today's branded content policy update was overly broad. This created confusion and frustration, and we apologize for that. We do not intend to limit streamers' ability to enter into direct relationships with sponsors, and we understand that this is an important part of how streamers earn revenue. We wanted to clarify our existing ads policy that was intended to prohibit third-party and networks from selling burned-in video and display ads on Twitch, which is consistent with other services. We missed the mark with the policy language and we'll rewrite the guidelines to be clearer. Thank you for sharing your concerns and we appreciate the feedback. We'll notify the community once we've updated the language. What a load of horseradish. This, this is some sour fucking mustard here. Basically just saying, we're sorry you misunderstood us. Yeah, we must use too many big words for your simpleton minds and it led to too much confusion. So we're sorry for that. We'll make sure to dumb it down into layman's terms going forward. Well, that's just not the case. It's not like you... 
put out a broad statement that had a lot of uh, misinterpretation or misconstruing of the information. You laid out pictures. Like, you literally made it as simple and specific as possible. Down to exact percentages of how much it could take up on screen. 3%. That's not broad. Like, you specifically laid it all out with fucking pictures. Like, I don't know why they're trying to play this angle that it was just too broad and confusing and people misunderstood it. You made it clear what your intention was. I don't think there was any misunderstanding here. This is just a really sad attempt to try and save face like, Oh, no, 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 the, we, we didn't mean what you guys are saying. No, 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 that's, we meant something totally different. Brother, you laid out a picture book of the new policy change. Twitch, 73% market share, dead copium. No, the reason why Twitch is able to do these decisions is because of that market share. And it's really fucked up if they actually follow through on it. That's the that's my angle on this conversation is that like they see the 73% market share they have on live streaming across the board and they think other competitors are irrelevant. They're either A, paying us like Kick, or B, completely irrelevant like DLive, or See YouTube that doesn't care about live streaming all that much. Um, doesn't get more clear than that. Now, again, this is just very obvious backpedaling here, but at least just own it. Just be like, hey, guys, look, we fucked up. We're lost. We don't know what we're doing at Twitch, guys. Look, it's everything's on fire over here. Employees are getting let go left and right. Our CEO's 96 years old. He's a fucking fossil. Like, we just don't know what's going on. You know, we can't steer the ship correctly. So we fucked up with this idea. We're just desperately trying to get a couple more doubloons out of the platform and don't know how. Like, at least that would have been honest. As opposed to going down this path where it's like, ah, it, sorry, it was confusing and you guys didn't understand us. And then the ultimate cherry on top of the shit cake is they still, in their response, don't explain what they're doing. They're still not explaining what the new policy is doing. They're just saying, okay, we'll rewrite it. Okay, but so what did we get wrong? What did we misunderstand then? The only thing they add even a little bit of clarity to is that it's supposed to target third-party ad networks. Like, I, I suppose there's some companies that have programs that will pump branded content onto some streams and it kind of competes with Twitch's own built-in display ads. It's something I've never heard of and had to do some serious digging to find because it's not exactly a prevalent issue on the platform from everything I'm reading, but... There are a couple of companies that will pump their own ads. Onto it's, streamers. it's literally Streamlabs and Stream Elements. Uh, I don't know. Like, if you want to, it's Streamlabs and Stream Elements that do it for like smaller tier and mid tier uh, content creators who don't have their own management. And that's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, this technically still encompasses uh, all of the esports organizations I mentioned from Luminosity to OTK to 100 Thieves to even fucking offline TV, if you want to consider that uh, an organization that sells across their entire uh, base of content creators as uh, and, and they use those numbers as like their overall inventory. We did it for larger ones as well, but that was before they built OTK. Yeah, stream elements do it. You have to agree to have ads on screen on your panels, stream a certain amount, etc. And even those campaigns can be pretty bad. Yeah. Streams, like burn in ads onto their streams. And when those pop up during a stream, that makes money for that third party company, not Twitch. And sometimes the streamer gets a kickback from that as well. But it's not like a true sponsorship partnership deal. It's like a ad network having their own, basically having their own display ads on twitch without it being twitch display ads if that makes any sense it's it's very niche like if that truly was what they are trying to target this is a very overblown response and exaggerated reaction to it they went nuclear on it with this whole song and dance they've made out of it it's very clear twitch wants to facilitate every sponsorship deal through their platform so they get a cut of it they've, they've announced like the ad incentive program as well as they even have their own new branded content program to get sponsorships through them and they get a portion of all of that. So they want to make sure that streamers are kind of coerced into using those programs so that way Twitch can get more money out of them as opposed to having their own agents, their own managers, or their own connections to the these brands to work directly with them where Twitch